Equipment. Also, we look at new series on inline skating, plus the movie The Client, plus Robocop the TV series. But first, to kick off the show, the young, the beautiful, the live, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brown So, live on five, that was your first <laughs> gig, right? Yeah. And this was your breakout into the mainstream. Yeah, yeah, my, my TV debut, and that was your start. My right. very, very so start, start. I, I, I think I had no idea. I think I grew up with... I grew up thinking that even before that, you were like famous already. No. Yeah, no, yeah. I, was, I was nobody. I was <laughs> uh, After Music Drama Company, I, uh, I went to Hopa Villa for four years. We did a lot of musicals, yeah. Park Walk and all have you. Mm. Um, after that, I went to join a band. I was a singer in a band in Jakarta. Yeah. Uh, came back and then... Uh, uh, then only after that, uh, someone from SBC back then, wow. uh, a producer, remembered yeah. me from Hopper Villa mm. and said, come on in for an interview and uh, an uh, audition. And so when I did my first show, Life on Five, it was a huge learning curve, very steep, uh, deep, deep end thrown in because I had never done TV before. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, it was a live TV show. Yeah. On top of that, it was one hour long. <laughs> so like, you know, like, let's see how fast he can sync with uh, yeah. all these three bricks. Um, but... Uh, for me, I, 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 okay, before the show, I get diarrhea because I was so bloody nervous. But once I was on stage, I forgot all about it. I just had to do my duty mm. as a, whatever I was, a host or, of the variety show. Yeah. I just had to do it. Uh, I would enjoy it, but then after that, I'll be like a uh, zombie, brain dead, mm. go home, and then like <laughs> cricket, you know. And then you start again the whole next uh, next week starts all over again. Uh, it was like that for about nine months. Wait, how many episodes weekly? Eh? Live once, on once, once a week. Okay. Once a week. That's mm. a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, something that I heard you mention in another interview that you feel that something that's lacking nowadays hmm. is the practice and the preparation for that one show. What kind of preparation went into um, live on five, one episode of Live on Five. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll sit down with the writers, and then they'll tell me what they find, what they're going to put up there. For example, because he was had, he had five different stages, right? So one would be for the band, one would be movie review, one would be for an interview with a foreign talent who's in town, uh, one could be a uh, a sketch or maybe a uh, fashion show. All these things were, were all just brewing stuff, you see. And then I had to sit down with them and talk to them, and then they tell me, discuss what's coming up, and then they write me a script and everything. So there was not uh, a rehearsal per se, but there was rehearsal on the day itself. So the show would go on live at 8 o'clock in the evening, but I'm already there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Uh, we are rehearsing the different segments. We are looking at the script and say, okay, this part I'll say the camera four, and this part I'll say the camera three. Halfway through, I go to camera one, and we did all this. And so what I had to do was follow the, follow the red light. Whenever the light you know, came up, I know, oh, that is over there. <laughs> that is over there. And, and that, was, that was okay, except that when it came to the live show, you could not guarantee you would do the same thing again. It sounds incredibly stressful. Very. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's like Saturday Night Live, I think. I, think that, I, I don't know the, the exact details, but they talk about like they're preparing up to the, the, the minute before yeah. the show. Yeah, you but know? you know, Saturday Night Live, uh, the actors read all the cards. Yeah. I can't. Wow. I, I had to memorize the whole script, right? So if there was a long one-pager thing, I had to know the facts. And if I come up next is a band, they perform where, 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 they've been around for so many, and there's a new album called blah, blah, blah. They were performing what concert now, blah, 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 and here they are. Why didn't they have those cards? They're because there, were, there was an audience in the crowd. So okay. back then, it was, you know, loose face if you do that, you see? Okay. So that was a steep learning curve, you're saying, okay. and that was your... your Break out. I think what happened also, what helped was that not just the show, but the campaign leading up to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, consultant, what they did was, as opposed to just advertising, oh, there's a new show coming out, Life on Fire, your host will become insane. They didn't do any of that. Mm. What they did was, if you're watching a show and there's a commercial break, suddenly out of nowhere in the commercial break, three or four hits will pop up one by one. Yeah. And they'll say, hi, I'm Gamit Singh. Hi, I'm Gamit Singh. Male, female, whatever. Even myself included. 
So after a while, people were asking, who the heck is this Gurmit Singh? Why are they doing this? You know? And he went into the, the public consciousness and when people were wondering, what's going on? Mm. So when my first show came out, hi, welcome to Life of Five. I'm Gurmit Singh. Whoa, the crowd went wild. Whoa. And after that, I remember the next day, when I went on the street, everybody was like, hey, Gurmit Singh, hey, Gurmit Singh, hey, Gurmit Singh, hey, Gurmit Singh. Well, I said, wow, this is a very powerful media. One minute, yeah. just the day before, I was nobody. Mm. I could walk down the street. Nobody would even give me a second look. That's how my life was in school. And so... But now suddenly everybody was pointing fingers at me. It was uh, overwhelming. Actually, it was literally overnight. Yeah, I, I couldn't buy my underwears anymore from Isetan. Yes, you're right about that <laughs> too. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, it's bizarre, you know, to hear. Little Technically, you can, but yeah. they will know what size, what, what size, color, yeah. what brand. Yeah, then do I buy an extra big one and just to, <laughs> you know, look a little bit manly? <laughs> yeah, uh, double XL for me. Yes, that's my uh, underwear size. Hey girls, how you doing? And then buy pink color. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You you talk about many things after that point. One of the things you talked about was the show Can I Help You? Mm. You felt that it just didn't work. Those oh. were your words. So yeah. um I I think I was about seven or eight so months. I, I, <laughs> um years. Yes. And <laughs> it it was nothing I, nothing struck me about it being about it not working, but why do you think it didn't work? It was a huge contrast to Live on Fire because in Live on Fire we had uh, uh, sketches and as well. And uh, that's where they thought, oh, you're actually hosting uh, well and you can also be funny. So let's do a kid's sitcom for you. Mm-hmm. So Can I Help You came along. But the problem was that, uh, I don't know why, management got very protective about me and they were worried about my imaging and my branding. Um, so many of the punchlines were given to some other people. Mm-hmm. I was just the uh, intermediary vehicle that would help people set up the lines and then and to a point, like I, actually, I remember vividly sitting at the table and asking the writers, uh, guys, w- w- where's my punchline? I got no punchline. And then they said, sorry, we actually some of these are your punchlines, but my management vetted it and said, no, 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 don't make it look bad. And I said, then I don't look funny at all. They said, yeah, exactly. They were very frustrated. The directors were like, Ugh. Now you're sharing that, okay, um, this, this show is created for you. We'll give you a sitcom. Yeah. But I don't remember your character being... You don't remember your impact, right? You don't remember. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. It didn't stand out. Mm. It was just, you know, helping set up scenes, set up lines, and yeah. transition between scenes. That's it. That yeah. was it. And it, uh, for me, I, I, I kind of like was very frustrated as well. And, and, and in a small way, I thought, okay, this is the end of my short career. After this, people <laughs> say, oh, he's not really funny, is it? Because she's not human. <laughs> Holiday. <laughs> you mean lazy? <laughs> ah. And still, he knows nothing. Jack knows about selling. Imelda Marcos. <laughs> but Jimmy Talk Kang will handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in pain. Not. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> Mr. Cruz will take charge. Luckily, they took that out uh, after, I think, one or two seasons, and then we got our uh, show called Gamit's World. Yep. And that put me back on the map, as, the, as, as you would. Yeah. And uh, that helped me a lot. Okay. Interesting, interesting. And not many people will know also, but you shared in your one of your interviews when you left Mediacorp in 2014 yeah. that you were supposed to be in Under One Roof. <laughs> <laughs> please, please share. Oh, yeah. that one was one of my downest moments, you know, when I was told that. Uh, management told me, uh, you know, we're thinking of uh, getting you into Under One Roof. And by then, Under One Roof had just come up, right? Yeah. And I said, what a wonderful show. What's so funny. And they told me, they said, actually, we, we thought of putting you in that show. And my character was supposed to be this guy who who sings in a club at night, uh, my previous uh, gig and all that. Mm. And then every morning, I'd be a blur. I'd be like the Joey of Friends. Mm. He's always blurred, he can't do math. And on top of that, he's sleepy, you know, because yeah. it's daytime, he doesn't wake up. So I said, oh, what a nice character. I would have loved doing that. I said, but we decided at the end, there are too many characters in the show, and we thought, well... Um, so when I heard about that, I was very... Uh, I, I guess I was a bit uh, uh, disappointed, and I thought, wow, you know, I could have gone so much. And then I saw Underworld going higher and higher, yeah, like, wow. Yeah, huge. And then I was like... You know, at the bar, drinking orange juice, <laughs> upset myself, like looking at the camera, looking at the I mean, TV screen. Um, but then, you know, it, uh, things work out, you know, because yeah. if I was in that show, then I wouldn't, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have had the uh, the Gourmet's World that 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 where, it's where we found uh, Pua Chu Kang, yeah. the character. And then after that, we found a sitcom for him. And the rest, as they say, is history. Mm-hmm.